my dash 4 an lines but it depends on how it, this thing screwed in we'll find out later on where this thing's going to be and this one is a little bit different since it's a uh, ceramic ball bearings it has to be restricted <laughs> practice practice I'm just pre-lubing the turbo, making sure I got oil in there. Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is oil feed lines. I'm going to uh, show you how I'm going to uh, connect my oil lines and show you where I'm tapping the uh, oil source behind the block. This is what I'm going to use, an adapter. Hopefully this will not break on me with all the vibration and everything. Since I have an oil pressure sending unit, I'm going to install it at the back and maybe uh, this is where I'm going to tap in my Dash 4 AN lines. But it depends on how it, this thing screwed in. We'll find out later on where this thing's going to be positioned to. And I'm using one of these uh, fitting, which is a DAS 4218. There's no need to uh, put a Teflon tape on it since it's a uh, NPT. It's more like a self-sealing uh, component. And I already routed my 4A in lines, going to the back of the block. A little bit of information on what size oil restrictor, the fittings that you must use. This is made by PSR and it came in with this. So ever since I've been using this. This is a dual ceramic ball bearings and it doesn't really require a whole lot of oil going into the system. It's not like the journal bearing where you don't need a restrictor. You can just straight right on. One of the leading brand turbo manufacturer is suggesting to have a 40 to 45 oil pressure going into the uh, system. There's really no way of knowing that, not unless I connect another oil sending unit right in this area going into the turbo. But that's kind of, yeah, it's kind of iffy. Uh, actually, if you have more gauges inside the cabin, you have more things to worry about. This fitting is just for information. I just want to show you how much this thing is measured. Always do your research when it comes to oil restrictor for your turbo. Yeah, this one, it's kind of loose. I believe this is 25,000. But the uh, wire itself is 20,000. But this thing is working out for me. I have no problem. You have seen me earlier that I pour some oil, squirt some oil in there just to uh, pre-lube. Alright, that's just that and uh, let's go underneath. Yeah, there's another location where I can put this and I can always replace the one that goes in the cabin but I don't want to do that it's just too far up in the block that uh, yeah it's 
it's not very accessible for me so here's the one I'm gonna put on yeah hopefully this would not vibrate and it'll break on me we'll see where the I need to remove the uh, that feeling on me but it depends on how it, this thing screwed in we'll find out later on where this thing's gonna be positioned to the port it landed right at the filter oh no now I need to make huh. now I need to make another Oh man, even if I, oh man, there's no space. Oh man. Why is that? Yeah, it landed right at the bottom of the oil filter. It should be here. Okay. Uh, let me remove this again and uh, I'll be back. I'm going to create a hole and make a new thread. We're back in business. I made another hole and create another thread. 1.8 NPT. And I got the plug on the other side. There. should be no problem at all okay there. I'm gonna put the uh, oil sanding unit at the back No washers required. Okay. Connect the uh, connector. Good to go. Now my fitting. There's just no, no room for me here. So just bear with me. What I should have done is I should, uh, I should have removed the filter, then screw it in, but it will work both ways, I guess. I'm just making it harder for myself that's all but it can be done good all right the turbocharger oil feed source is all done right there and we get to uh, crank it up and we'll check for leaks 
I'm gonna get set up for cranking the motor that way we get to see that I have a positive flow of oil going into the turbo and it's draining then uh, I'll connect it afterwards uh, battery is dead let's give it a try again possible it could have a hydro lock yeah. we'll give it another shot wait for a little while <laughs> but it's going dead For the last time. Oh, all right, there it is. Okay, now we know I got oil coming out. <laughs> all right, that is it. Cool. Constant flow now. No leaks. So I'm good. Let's see if there's any oil in here. Ah, none. All right. Right on man, everything is all complete. No leaks. It drained like it should. And the spark plug, this is BKR7E. I will cap this to 20,000 and on dyno day session, I'll go ahead and replace this one, put a new one on there can afford to have this thing fouled plus it's better to start on something fresh something new yeah it's good to see this thing rotates by itself you know yeah it's a good feeling now so the only thing left actually is just the uh, the downpipe the rest is all set all right uh this is where i conclude this episode and uh make sure to uh drop a like uh hit that like button and Leave a comment and I'll see you guys on the next. Bye everyone. The lit, the juice, the sauce. Later.